Hi there everybody, I'm Daniel and this is a short video about how to program this guy to work with your Headrush Looper board. But before we get into that, I hope you'll take just a second to hit that little red rectangle underneath this video that says subscribe so that you can know whenever I have more videos posted, I'll be posting lots more things about how to operate the Headrush Looper board, how I use it, some tips and tricks, and also some of my performance videos. So do that. I promise you won't regret it. So one of the things that excited me about the Headrush Looper board whenever I first looked at it is the capability of controlling different functions by a MIDI foot controller. And I know that that sounds really geeky to get excited about, but that's the sort of thing that I just love. So as I was reading through the manual, even before I bought the Looper board, that was one of the things I'd planned to do with it. Now I also started looking at the Behringer FCB 1010 and realized that I could probably use it. So I got to looking around on YouTube and all of the videos that have to do with programming the Behringer FCB uh, 1010 just don't cover what needs to be covered in getting it to work with the looper board. So that's what I want to do in this is try to give you an abbreviated uh, but nonetheless as complete as I can explanation of how this works. Uh, first of all again we're not controlling program changes. In other words, with other outboard systems uh, like effects pedals and uh, multi-effects pedals and things like that, you might control program changes to control different presets and things. But what we're actually wanting to work with are control changes, which are a different thing entirely. I guess the best way to think of it would be like thinking of how an expression pedal would be programmed. First of all, if you're going to program it to do a specific action, like maybe do volume, you would want to find out what the control channel number is for that. So let's just, for the sake of discussion, say that it's 27. So uh, there's a few different values we're concerned with. We've got that control change number, that control channel is 27. And then we've got the low end, zero would be 0%, all the way up to maybe 127, which would be 100% of whatever that parameter is. In this case, 0% volume and 100% volume. But in between zero and 127, we've got a lot of other values. And here's the way the looper board works in controlling things. It takes one control channel for these uh, individual toggle style stop start on off controls and puts them on control channel three and then uses different values in that between zero and in this case about 60 to initiate whatever command you want to initiate. Now that's again different from what a lot of other devices do in, in turning on off different presets and things, but uh, it's not nearly as complicated in practice, I promise. So what we're gonna be concerned with when we're programming these different changes are two numbers. That control channel, which will be number three, and then the different parameters that uh, we'll program into that board, and there's different values for each one. If you look at the board, the the way this is laid out, you've got 10 buttons and each one of those buttons is a preset uh, option in different banks and you'll see the up down bank buttons and, and then you've got the foot controllers on the side, the expression pedals that you can program. But when you enter the editing mode, you'll notice above those buttons there are different parameters that you're going to be able to adjust. And here's where things get a little bit tricky. Uh, when you enter the editing mode, the left side of that board, all of the number buttons, do two different things. They either are showing you what particular part of that patch that you are activating or deactivating, and they also serve as a giant numeric keypad. And so what we're going to want to do as we program just individual control changes is be sure that we activate the control change setting and then also 
be sure we put in the right values. And then the up and down buttons serve a different purpose as well. The down button as you hold it down enters the editing mode and the up button then serves as an enter key. So as we start entering values, if we think about those numbered pedals as being a numeric keypad and then we think about the up key as being the enter key that I think at least in my mind that simplifies things a lot more. So uh, just take a second and familiarize yourself with the layout of the board so that you know what things are going on. Here's what you need to do to actually program this thing. First of all, either download the manual or get your manual out and find the section that has the MIDI control information and what you're going to want there is a couple of charts. There's one chart that gives the expression pedal controls that you can program and then there's another chart that gives you the control changes for like stopping and starting and fading and turning effects or acts on and off and things like that. And so be sure you have that chart because you're going to need all of those numbers to be able to program this thing. So to give a demonstration of how to do this, what I want to do is show you how to program it to where you can turn an effects rack on and off. In this case, effects rack one. So you've got your chart with the numbers on it. We'll want the second chart that has the individual control changes. And you'll notice that effects rack one is on control channel three and it is value number one. So here's how we're going to program this. I want to put it on button number one. So I'm going to start by activating that button. Then I'm going to hold the down button, the bank down button down for a couple of seconds and that's going to enter the editing mode. Now when you enter the editing mode, it depends on what's been set up on this preset before. Uh, in this case, you'll notice we have the 1 lit and then we have the 8 and the 9 lit. Now what this is showing you is that on this particular patch, you have a program change that's going to be activated and you have expression pedal A and expression pedal B that are activated on this. Now we don't want the program change so what we'll do is turn that off by holding the one button down. Now this has nothing to do with what number the or what pedal we're going to program this all to work on. Right now we're we're kind of in the settings of that first button. So what we want to do is turn on the control change, which in this case, if you'll look above button number six, you'll see that it tells you that's for control change one. Hold the six down until the LED lights. So now we should have six and eight and nine lit, and that's telling us that we have a control change that we're going to program, and also that we have expression pedal A and B that are a part of this patch. Now to set that value for the control change to turn the effects rack on and off, what we want to do is tap the 6 and you'll notice that it starts blinking and it, what it's wanting us to do is verify that we actually want to edit that. So we'll hit the up button. Once we hit the up button we'll see some numbers pop up. This first number is going to be the control change or control channel that we're going to uh, activate. So for this changing the FX rack, we're going to be on control channel 3, as you'll see from the chart. So we set it to 3. We can use the keypad, just hit the 3 uh, key, and then we'll hit up for enter. Now we're given another number. This number is the actual data message that we want to put in, or the value we want to put in. In this case, we want to put in 1 so that it changes the FX rack one from on to off or vice versa or uh, whatever we have that button set to do in the looper board. So we will tap one and then hit enter and that registers that setting. Now to exit all of this and move on to actually controlling the FX rack, we'll hold the down button and that gets us back to the standard operation mode. So now if you test it, if you'll go to the FX rack on your looper board, you should now be able to turn that FX rack on and off. So what about the expression pedals? Well, they're pretty similar in the way that all these things work. You'll follow all the same instructions up to the point 
that you get to where you enter the values. So you enter the editing mode, you'll tap whichever expression pedal you want to program, whether it's A or B, you'll choose eight or nine. That'll blink, you'll hit enter. The first value you want to enter in this one though, is going to be the control channel for whatever parameter you want to adjust. So if it's fade rate or volume or pan, whatever it happens to be. The next value is going to be the low end value. So I would suggest putting zero. So you've got the lowest value possible. And then the next value after you hit enter is going to be the upper end. And I would suggest going ahead and putting in the highest one, putting in 127 so you have the full range of that pedal. So let me show you how I've got my board programmed for now and uh, how powerful this can be. Uh, part of the downside of all the functionality in the looper board is that certain features you had to hit multiple button presses to get to. And as I'm standing up playing a guitar, uh, standing on one foot trying to tap back and forth and back and forth uh, might uh, end in disaster. <laughs> I've got pretty good balance, but I'm still worried I'm going to fall. Uh, so what I did was program in some of my most used features and put them in places where it was easy for me to find them. For example, the stop undo, I put on the first few buttons to, to use and I labeled them as Q because that's how I'm going to use them whenever I'm in serial mode to queue up the different tracks to come in afterwards or serial sync mode in this case since I've just got two, three, and four. And then I've got tracks two and three uh, set to fade so that whenever I'm in fixed mode, instead of just abruptly cutting tracks off, I can fade them in and out. Then buttons six, seven, eight, and nine are set up to turn on the effects racks, one through four. And uh, that way I can very easily switch between my bass sound to my acoustic guitar sound to even a lead sound a little bit boosted. And I've got all that just right at my feet and I don't have to worry about falling over or tapping multiple button presses speeds up the process significantly of building a loop because I can change effects settings with the tap of one button instead of three buttons to get back to starting and stopping things. So uh, I'm looking forward to using this. I hope this is something that'll be helpful to you and if you've got any questions then feel free to put those in the comments. Again if you haven't already please hit the subscribe button. I have lots more videos in the works for how to use the looper board and little hacks and tips and tricks and things that will make your performing life easier in using this device. By the way, if you're interested in more information about the Behringer FCB 1010, there's a link to that in the description, as well as a link to the current manual for the Headrush Looper board so that you can very quickly and easily find the parameters there that you want to program. That's all I have for this video. I hope you have a great day. See you again soon. And subscribe.